Well, summer is here, basically, and with that comes a lot of great things. Beaches, baseball, heat, if you like that. And for a lot of people, it also comes with road trips. Road trips can be a great, great experience. It's fun to travel the countryside uh, and get to a destination. And the adventure along the way can be very uh, satisfying. It can also suck, it can be challenging, and at some points it can be horrific. So what I want to do today is talk road trip horror movies. And my original plan was I was going to uh, think about a list of like 10 road trip horror movies and rank them from 10 all the way to 1 and give you guys my favorite road trip horror movie. But as I was researching, I found an article that listed 45 road trip horror movies. And I thought it might be fun to go through that together. I have no idea the movies that are on this list. You know, I have a a little bit of an idea of some that'll make the list uh, but other than that I have no idea there's probably a lot I've seen and a lot I've, I haven't seen so I want you guys to tell me in the comments uh, a couple of things number one your favorite road trip horror movie and number two um, if there's any movies that you haven't seen that you want to see based on what we're seeing here um, or some that I haven't seen when I let you know that I definitely should see so we're gonna pull up the article here and as I'm going through this guys I'm not gonna spend a shit ton of time on each movie because there's 45 of them but as i'm going through here uh like i said make sure you're commenting down below uh and don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button if you feel like it i appreciate it and it helps out the channel all right enough of that let's get into this so uh you can't see it because i cut it off a little bit but it says 45 road trip horror movies let's scroll down and see what's on the list like i said we're not going to read this word for word i just want to get a list of movies and create a discussion with them so here we go. Right off the bat, we got The Hitchhiker from 1953. I'm going to read a little synopsis of this. I don't know if this is like, uh, you know, like Hitcher, because that's, you know, been remade a couple times. Uh, but it says, uh, a crime film noir by the most popular female filmmaker of the 50s, Ida Lupino. Uh, the Hitchhiker follows Roy and Gilbert as they set off from Southern California towards a fishing trip in Mexico. And then they obviously pick up a hitchhiker who takes out a gun and holds him hostage. All right. For the 50s, that could be interesting. You know, 50s movies for me are, are hit and miss. Let's continue. I'm sure you guys have heard of this one, Psycho. Uh, you know, technically this is a road trip uh, horror movie because Marion Crane steals from her employer and then is on the road. And we all know she ends up at the Bates Motel. Uh, so I'm liking this list already because it's, you know, taking a little bit of liberties here using Psycho uh, because... Uh, Although it is a road trip horror movie, you don't really think about it as a road trip horror movie. Um, but if you really break down the plot, it is about her being on the road and on the run. So yeah, I, I like it. So Psycho, 1960. If you haven't seen Psycho, where have you been? Uh, next, oh yeah, Night of the Living Dead from 1968. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Oh yeah, this is, this is obviously classic. Um, you know, it, it's become, you know, a gif and a meme and, you know, how many movies too just have that, you know, somebody watching Night of the Living Dead uh, in the background, you know, Halloween 2, I believe does, and there's countless others. Uh, so Night of the Living Dead, obviously a great one. That's one I need to rewatch because I haven't seen that in quite a bit. Here we go. Duel from 1971. This is Spielberg's debut movie. I saw this, God, I was young when I saw this, haven't revisited it, um, so I don't have much to say, but it's one, another one that I need to rewatch, um, especially because it's Spielberg's debut. Um, and if it's Spielberg, even though it, you know, it's pre-Jaws and all that, you know, it's got to be at least halfway entertaining, right? Here we go. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. The biggest horror of this movie, uh, not horror, but the biggest horror of this movie uh, for everyone here isn't Leatherface. It isn't uh, somebody, um, you know, coming at him with a chainsaw and a crazy family. It's being stuck in a fucking car with Franklin. Dear God. That is the worst road trip experience you can possibly have. Let's continue here. Let's see what's next here. Race with the Devil from 1975. Uh, Looks like this is going in order, which is kind of cool. Um, I've, I've never seen this. Have you guys seen Race with the Devil? Let's read a little bit about it here. 
an action horror movie about two couples traveling from San Antonio to Aspen in an RV for a ski vacation. While camping along the way in Texas, the group witnesses a satanic sacrifice. The Satanists then chase them down as the group struggles to make it to Amarillo to get help and report the crime. All right. I'm in on that synopsis. I like it. Uh, what's this called? Uh, Race with the Devil from 1975. All right. Let me know if you've seen that. Here we go. The Hills Have Eyes from 1977. We had a Spielberg, and now we got a Craven. Um, you know, Hills Have Eyes, you know, along with um, the other fucking movie, Last House on the Left, um, or some of Craven's early works here. Um, and this, you know, the, especially the character right here, uh, you know, he's become meme worthy. He's, you know, in popular culture, you know, he's in weird science and all kinds of things. Um, but this is like cannibalistic psychopaths. Yeah, that's what it says there. Um, and there's, as they're passing through the area. This is a trope that's been, you know, done countless times since then. Um, but, um, you know, Hills Have Eyes is pretty decent. You know, it's not great, but, but it's pretty decent. And another one, like I'm going to say this ad nauseum, but another one I probably need to rewatch. Getting to the 80s, close, I think. Taurus Trap from 79. This is the one that's always been on my list. I think I've seen it on Tubi and things like that. But uh, I, I love the title. Let's read a little bit of the synopsis here. Um, have you guys seen Taurus Trap? It says, a group of friends traveling through the desert get stranded at a um, uh, malevolent Taurus Trap in the supernatural slasher movie. While the proprietor helps the gang with one of their vehicles, the group explores a waxwork museum and one of the girls is strangled by an unseen entity and turned into a mannequin. Okay, so this is kind of like House of Wax, right? I'm in. I'm in. Late 70s, gratuitous horror, uh, wax museum. I'm in. Let's see what's next. Motel Hell. Another great title and another one that's been on my list. Uh, another one that I think is either on Tubi or, or something. Uh, it says it's low-budget horror comedy about a sadistic family of cannibals. It sound, sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. You know, some of these road trip movies are going to be kind of like, uh, you know, rehashes of other road trip movies. Uh, but I'm here for it. Motel Hell, great title. 1980. I love early 80s horror movies. It's got some nostalgia for me. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to check that one out. I have never heard of this one. Road Games from 81. Pat Quaid is a truck driver in the Australian Outback. Love Australia. Uh, who is a suspicious or who is suspicious of a van driver he encounters and believes they may be the serial killer who has been preying on hitchhikers hey jamie lee curtis i can't believe i haven't heard of this quaid picks up a hitchhiker named pamela played by jamie lee curtis interesting so jamie lee curtis uh and was hitchhiking in the fog and then she's hitchhiking in road games death valley 1982. Is that Ralphie? Kind of looks like Ralphie from A Christmas Story, doesn't it? Another one I never heard of. Uh, it says a woman and her new boyfriend and her son Billy are driving through Death Valley on their way to Arizona. Billy takes a frog pendant when he stumbles across a camper that belongs to a cowboy serial killer, or to cowboy serial killer twins while stretching his legs, and they chase the family through the desert. All right, I'm intrigued. Early 80s. Um, Tell me crazy or does that look like Ralphie? Tell me in the comments if that looks like Ralphie. Here we go. Children of the Corn. Um, I've talked about this in some of my Stephen King rankings and Stephen King videos I've done. Uh, this is not a good movie at all. But I fucking love it. Uh, a lot of nostalgia again for me. Um, and this obviously starts out with them on a road trip. You got Linda Hamilton in the same year Terminator uh, came out and Peter Horton, I think it is. But um, yeah, this starts out as a road trip movie and they, they hit the kid in the standing in the road and they end up in Gatlin and they're lost and you know, something about this movie, like I said, it's not a good movie, but something about it just speaks to me. You know, being lost in the Midwest in the cornfields, I get that. You know, I grew up in the Midwest, so I get that. Um, and this movie's always always really creepy, uh, to me at least. Let's see what's next. We're pumping through the mid eighties here. Here we go. One of the better ones, uh, The Hitcher from 1986 with C. Thomas Howell. Um, it says, yeah, it's a cult classic at this point. I believe it's been remade uh, at least once. Uh, but this is classic, you know, pick up an evil hitchhiker. Uh, wackiness ensues. Um, so Hitcher is definitely one that, you know, if somebody's making a list of road trip horror movies, it would be definitely on the list. 
and probably very close to the top. If you haven't seen Hitcher from 86, I would highly recommend it. Near Dark, okay, I wouldn't have thought this as a uh, um, road trip movie, but okay. So this is obviously the Bill Paxton vampire movie, R.I.P. Bill, from 1987. Um, and let's just read a little bit of the synopsis in case you haven't seen it. A uh, young vampire turns small boy named Caleb into a uh, A young vampire turns a small boy named Caleb into a vampire at the end of a steamy date. She uh, belongs to a drifter coven of vampires led by Bill Paxton. I mean, that, if that doesn't sell you on this alone, I mean, come on, come on. Go see Near Dark if you haven't seen it yet. Another one I haven't heard of. Look at this picture. This kid's in some trouble. Cohen and Tate from 1988. A nine-year-old boy named Travis Knight has to turn his kidnappers uh, against each other as they hold them hostage on a road trip. This kid's in witness protection program, right? I'm not going to lie. This sounds pretty stupid. Let's move on. It sounds stupid. The Vanishing from 88. Young woman disappears at a gas station uh, during a road trip with her boyfriend. Okay, that kind of sounds like the plot of one of my favorite Kurt Russell movies of all time uh, from the early 90s. Um, blanking on the name of it, actually, uh, at the moment. I'll probably think of it five minutes from now and interrupt myself. But that's okay. That's what I do, guys. That's what I do. Um, but, um, but yeah, Breakdown is the name. Hey, I can... It was only like 30 seconds. But anyway, um, yeah, it sounds like the, the plot of Breakdown. Um, and for me, I'd rather watch Breakdown because that movie's awesome. Uh, but I'd give this a shot. You know, the kidnapper makes uh, contact, says he will reveal the missing woman's fate, but only if her boyfriend will agree to experience the answer firsthand. I don't know what that means, but okay. We're into the 90s. We got Midnight Ride starring what looks like Mark Hamill, so Luke Skywalker himself. Never heard of this one. Um, an action thriller about a housewife who leaves her cop husband uh, on the road to a friend's house. She takes pity on a hitchhiker named Mark Hamill, Justin, uh, and picks him up. Turns out Justin is seriously disturbed in the midst of a murder spree. All right, Mark Hamill on a murder spree? Okay, he must be going after people that uh, don't agree with his politics. Um, but yeah, okay, I I'm, I'm into that, okay. Here we go. Obviously, a great title here. Great song, too. ACDC. Highway to Hell from 1981. Uh, Christy Swanson's in this. Uh, it's a B horror movie comedy about a young couple um, who take a road trip to elope in Las Vegas. Um, and while taking a back road, the woman is kidnapped and taken to hell to be the bride of Satan. Wow, that escalated quickly, huh? And then a gas station attendant gives the guy a special gun and cars so we can go to hell and rescue his fiance. That sounds batshit crazy, and I might be here for it. Could be entertaining. Ah, I like this movie. California with a K. It's got Brad Pitt, David Duchovny, Juliette Lewis. Uh, this is a really cool movie. I don't think it's a great movie, but I think it's a cool movie. I remember seeing it on, T on TV. I think it was like TNT when I was younger, and I'm a big Duchovny fan, so that's what drew me to this. This was right kind of... Uh, you know, in the middle-ish to the early middle of his run on the X-Files. And essentially, he is a, uh, like a writer or something or some type of journalist where he's doing a story on serial killers. And he's taking a road trip across the country to stop at all these places that are famous. Uh, famous murders happen for serial killers and stuff like that, right? Uh, he picks up a hitchhiker. He's with his girlfriend. Picks up a hitchhiker. And uh, the hitchhiker is Juliette Lewis and Brad Pitt. And unbeknownst to him, Brad Pitt is actually kind of a serial killer. And he's killing people during the road trip. And, you know, craziness ensues. I've always enjoyed this movie. Like I said, it's not great. Um, but um, I, I got a thing for, like, early 90s movies, too. Um, and this is kind of like a cheap early 90s movie. And I like the company. So have you guys seen California? Let me know in the comments. I right, were chugging right along here. From Dust Till Dawn. Guys... I've never seen this movie. I know it's a Tarantino. I know about uh, uh, Selma Hayek. I know about Clooney and his hair. I know about all that. I know the plot. I just haven't seen it. Please don't shoot me. Um, it's definitely, definitely on my list. Um, and yeah, so are you guys Dusk Till Dawn fans? I know there's a bunch of sequels too. Um, but let me know in the comments. Oh, it is here. Yes. 
Breakdown. I get to talk about Breakdown. All right, let me tell you something about this movie. This movie fucking rules. Um, so you got Kurt Russell, who isn't really playing, at least at first, a typical Kurt Russell character. He's kind of preppy and things like that. Uh, but him and his wife are traveling across the country to the West Coast to get a new job or something like that. And uh, their car breaks down. Shocker, right? A movie called Breakdown. They're driving and the car breaks down. Anyway, um, this is pre-cell phones, uh, 97. Um, a truck driver stops in his big uh, semi-truck. Uh, has to help them. Uh, can't get it started, but he uh, picks up Kurt Russell's wife. She goes with the um, uh, semi-truck driver to go get help. Well, and Kurt Russell's going to meet him at some diner, right? Uh, well, anyway, he goes to the diner, and she never showed up. And then he finally tracks down the truck driver. Truck driver, played by J.T. Walsh, by the way, R.I.P. Uh, but truck driver says he's never seen Kurt Russell before in his life. And Kurt Russell's freaking out, and he's got to figure out what's going on. Where is his wife? Um, love this fucking movie. And Kurt Russell just, like, starts losing his shit in this movie um, because, uh, you know, his wife's been kidnapped. Um, and it's really, really creepy the way, you know, J.T. Walsh is like, i never seen this guy in my life. You know, and he's like, what? You know, it, it, it's it's a great fucking movie. It's not a horror movie. It's very suspense. Um, but I, I just love this fucking movie. Um, so if you haven't seen Breakdown from 1997 and you like Kurt Russell, I would highly suggest you uh, stop what you're doing right now and go watch Breakdown. All right. Sorry, got excited there. All right, next we have Jeepers Creepers from 2001. Not even going to say my fucking disclaimer because I hate that we have to say it anymore. Obviously, I'm against that shit. Obviously, the guy's a fucking jackass, right? I'm not even going to say his name. But anyway, Jeepers Creepers as a movie is great. Really, really great. Justin Long is great in this. Um, and it's just really creeper. Or creeper. Creepy. Uh, the Creeper uh, is a good villain. I think he was kind of ruined in the sequels. Uh, but in this movie, it is really unsettling uh, what happens. And I love just kind of the, the mystery of it. Um, and I especially love the ending. I'm not going to ruin the ending for anyone, uh, but what happens at the end is pretty fucking chilling. Uh, so if you haven't seen Jeepers Creepers and um, you can separate art from the artist, I would highly suggest uh, you check it out. Uh, it's from 2001. Joyride, is this the um, Paul Walker one? Yes, it is. Um, once again, one that I saw, I think, when it first came out. I think it reminds me kind of of Duel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I remember it being pretty okay um, and uh, not not too bad. And I remember, um, you know, it's kind of a product of its time, right? That early 2000s, you know, we're still on the scream phase here from the late 90s to early 2000s where you get a lot of pretty people together um, and throw them in a horror movie. Um, let me know, guys, because my memory's a little hazy. If you've seen Joyride, if it's worth a rewatch. Next, we have Say Yes from 2001. Haven't seen this one. It says it's a South Korean thriller about a married couple who picks up a hitchhiker. <laughs> sounds uh, sounds familiar. Um, could be good. I have no idea. If you've seen it, let me know. Dead End from 2003. Never heard of this one. Uh, it's a horror movie about a family driving together on Christmas Eve. All right, Christmas movie. Uh, who take a shortcut through the woods. The shortcut takes them on a never-ending road. They meet a woman in white with a baby and attempt to give her a ride to a nearby house. It's not until the family separates that she reveals the baby she is actually carrying is dead. Interesting. It looks like Lynn Shea is in there from the picture on the right there. Okay. Sounds intriguing. Uh, I'm always looking for new Christmas horror movies. Boy, early 2000s had a lot of road trip horror movies, huh? Because now we're in 2003 and we got high tension. Another one I haven't seen. You'll notice I saw a lot of the older ones, but not as much of the ones in the 2000s here. Uh, there's a couple I hope that are on this list here. Um, if not, I'm going to mention them at the end. Um, best friends take a road trip to visit Alex's parents at a rural farm. Mysterious stranger arrives and kills her family. Uh, the intruder kidnaps someone. It sounds it sounds familiar. You know, uh, like I said, these road trip movies have their tropes. You know, it's a subgenre of horror, but even in the, inside that subgenre. Uh, they all have their tropes. And you knew this one would be on there. Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses from 2003. Um, you know, I don't know what I can say about this movie that hasn't been said. You know, it, it's similar to kind of 
I don't want to say it's similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, but it's similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre as in like people know what happens in this movie and how crazy it is. You know, um, there's there's sequels to this. You know, the Firefly, uh, Three from Hell, or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, the Firefly uh, family, right? Um, the sequel is actually pretty good. Not Three from Hell, but the other one. I can't can't think of the name offhand. Uh, but the sequel is pretty good. I, I, you guys know me. Uh, I like some Rob Zombie movies, um, but a lot of the times it's just not for me. Uh, but they definitely have its fans. And House of a Thousand Corpses is actually pretty decent. Um, it's not something I rewatch a lot, but it, but it, but it's pretty decent as far as uh, Rob Zombie stuff goes. Uh, here we go. Everybody knows this, right? Final Destination 2. I'm obviously talking about the beginning of the movie. Anybody that's seen this movie can never, ever drive behind a truck full of logs and not think of this ever again. You know, it's just, it's epic. It's absolutely epic what happens in that fucking car wreck on that highway. Just crazy. So Final Destination 2, um, yeah, you can call it a road trip movie based on the opening scene for sure. Here we go, another... Uh, another one from 2003. Holy shit. Uh, this is Wrong Turn. Uh, I don't mind this movie because, uh, you know, Faith, I'm a Buffy fan, and Faith from Buffy uh, uh, is in here, Eliza Dushku. And, uh, you know, this is a slasher movie, essentially, right? Uh, let's, let, let's read a little bit of it. Uh, it's a slasher film following two young groups of people who are on a road trip and end up stranded in a back road. Um, and then, you know, they meet these inbred mountain people. Uh, this movie, another another movie that has a bunch of sequels, I believe. I've never seen the sequels. Uh, but this movie's good enough. Uh, it's a 2003, uh, you know, movie about, you know, cannibals and shit. You know, it, it's good enough. I like it because of what Lysa Dushku. All right, this is one that I've never seen. But I believe uh, one of our viewers... Shane Emerson is always uh, recommending it to me. So I got a list of movies that people recommend me, and it's on my list. Uh, so I've never seen it, uh, but let me know if Wolf Creek is checking out, uh, worth checking out from 2005. Let me know in the comments. Rest Stop from 2006. Never heard of this. Direct-to-video, huh? So this could be so bad it's good, maybe? Or just bad. Uh, Nicole goes inside a creepy rest, or inside a rest stop. She comes out to find her friend has disappeared. Uh, and the truck driver, cat and mouse. Okay, seems like a dime a dozen type. But good name for a good title for a movie about a road trip. Death Proof from two thousand seven. Ah, Quentin Tarantino, Kurt Russell. This is one I, I've never seen. I'm not a big Tarantino fan, guys. I'm just not. Um, but um, if I'm looking for a road trip, you know, kind of horrors of road trips. Um, and I want to watch a new one, I'll, I'd probably give Death, uh, Death Proof a chance just because I know it'd be well made. And, you know, Kurt Russell's in there. And that's it. You guys couldn't, if you couldn't tell earlier, I can't get enough Kurt Russell. Uh, let me know in the comments if Death Proof is worth checking out. Ah, remake of The Hitcher. Uh, I have not seen this. Don't really plan to see it. If I want to watch The Hitcher, I'll probably just go back to the 1986 or whatever year that was version. Um, but maybe, who knows, maybe I'll give it a shot. Um, if the remake of The Hitcher is really, really good, though, please let me know, guys. Please let me know, and my tune could change. All right, here's one I was definitely hoping was going to be on this list. Vacancy from 2007. This has uh, Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale. This movie is fucking fantastic, and nobody talks about it, and it's a goddamn crime. Uh, I think this movie's better than The Strangers. Um, essentially... Uh, Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale are a married couple and they're kind of on the rocks, right? They're basically breaking up. But they're on some road trip for some reason. I can't remember if it was coming back from a wedding or something. Car breaks down. Shocker, right? And they have to go to some uh, shitty little hotel and they, you know, are in the hotel. It's really crappy. You know, you, know, you guys know the places, um, but it's really crappy. And um, they see a videotape lying there on top of the VCR. For some reason, it's 2007 and there's still a VCR. Okay, eh, it's probably right around that time, right, where VC, where uh, VHS was uh, um, dying down. But anyway, anyway, I digress. Uh, so they put in the tape, and they see all these fucking murders happening. Brutal fucking murders. And then they realize it's in the room that they're staying at. 
Um, so they just watched all that. And then, you know, craziness ensues. Then there's being hunted by the people that either work at this hotel or people that are in the area. They're in like the middle of nowhere. It's really fucking good. Uh, another one I want to rewatch because I haven't seen it in a few years, but I really enjoy Vacancy from 2007 and I would highly recommend it. Windchill, also from 2007. Uh, two college students share a ride home. Uh, car breaks down. What's with cars breaking down? I mean, that's obviously, you know, road trip, right? That's how horrors happen. That's how they start. Otherwise, you'd just be driving the whole time, right? Um, it looks like a spirit is involved in this one. Uh, that Interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I don't know. This one doesn't sound too intriguing, but I stand to be corrected upon watching. Um, if wind chill sounds interesting or wind chill, you've seen it and it's worth checking out. As, as I said earlier, guys, with some of these, please let me know. All right, we're in 2008. We're about 16 years away from getting to 2024. There's a lot of road trip horror movies, huh? I didn't realize that. Splinter from 2008. Um, never seen this one. It says two people are on their way to a romantic camping trip in Oklahoma when they're carjacked by an escaped convict and his girlfriend. At a gas station, the convict's girlfriend discovers the body of the attendant after an attack from a splintered, covered animal who then appears and attacks her. And then the girlfriend becomes a reanimated splinter creature herself and attacks two friends. And it, that's not where I expected that to go. Okay. I'm half intrigued and half like, what the fuck? Why would I ever watch that? Uh, but anyway, Splinter from 2008. I'll let you guys decide if that's interesting to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Human centipede. I can't even talk about this. I, I, I remember watching this in 2009 when it came out, and I and I didn't get through it. Um, I mean, just look at the picture here. You know, a, a doctor creates a human centipede um, from tourists, and yeah, this might be the worst fucking thing ever. Maybe you're a fan of human centipede if you're watching this, and if so, more power to you. I can't do that shit. I, I start imagining shit, and uh, yeah, I start imagining shit, and... <laughs> And I, I can't get over, you know, how horrible that would be. Um, but yeah, Human Centipede came out in 2009. And there's sequels. It was popular enough to get sequels. Crazy. Hey, here we go. Cabin in the Woods from 2011. You know, this is a very clever horror movie. Um, it, Josh Whedon's involved in this. Um, so it doesn't shock me with how clever it is. Uh, but it's got uh, a lot. It basically plays on the, the tropes of horror and kind of twists them on their head. Um and I don't want to ruin it, ruin this for people. So if you haven't seen Cabin in the Woods from 2011, uh, I would I would suggest checking it out. It's definitely worth checking it out. I don't think it's for everybody. Uh, it's not really dark, but it kind of is dark a little bit. It's a fun, fun movie. Um, so if you're a fan of horror, number one, why are you still watching this if you're not? Uh, but if you're a fan of horror, I would highly uh, suggest checking out Cabin in the Woods 2011 if you haven't seen it interesting 2012 crow's nest i kind of like the title actually uh ooh, found footage film about a group of friends on a road trip who stumble across an rv filled with nomadic cannibals this fucking cannibals where the fuck are all these cannibals coming from every half of these movies are involving cannibals it makes me not want to fucking take a road trip i i take it back at the beginning of this video i said they can be fun i didn't realize there were all these cannibals around uh, but it says uh when they realize they're in over their heads uh, their friends escape Unfortunately, the RV dwellers seem to be all-knowing and remain one step ahead of them. So, classic trope, right? Cannibals in the middle of nowhere. Chernobyl Diaries. Uh, I've actually seen this, and I remember it being not very good. I saw it a long time ago. Um, but uh, it says a disaster horror movie that follows three Americans traveling through Europe um, while visiting a family member in Ukraine. Hey, uh, the group is... Uh, can, uh, was it? Group is convinced to take a detour to visit the ghost town that was made uninhabitable by the '86 Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Yeah, I remember going in here. All kinds of shit. It, it, it's okay. This this movie's okay. It's not bad. Um, it's okay. It, it's people, tourists visiting Chernobyl place places, and there's stuff living in there. Uh, interesting concept, um, but kind of forgettable. Uh, I mean, right off the bat, this is a cool title. The house, the house is October built from 2014. Uh, it says another found footage movie about a group of friends traveling the country in search of the ultimate 
haunted house attraction. All right, I am fucking in right now on that first sentence. I am in. Uh, the attraction is called Blue Skeleton. When they ask too many questions about underground haunts, the group begins to be stalked. The group isn't sure if they found uh, what they are looking for or if they are in serious peril. Okay, right off the bat, guys, this fucking uh, description intrigues the shit out of me. Doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie, but I like the concept. Uh, let me know in the comments if The House uh, the House is October Built is a cool movie, if you've seen it, um, or if I'd be wasting my time checking it out. But I am all in on that concept. Road Games from 2015. Uh, never heard of this one. It's a British movie. Uh, British-French mystery. Uh, maybe Darren from Slaughtered Lamb has seen this. Maybe I can ask him. Um, but it's a British hitchhiker named Jack who moves a French hitchh hitchhiker named Veronique. Ver Veronique? Whatever. Uh, the two decide to travel together for safety as there is a serial killer on the loose. Cannibals and serial killers, right? Uh, man stops and offers to uh, offers it to a ride upon learning Jack is English and invites him to dinner to meet his English wife. Um, then he's reluctant to let him go. You must be the serial killer, right? Hmm. Sounds eh. Southbound from 2015. It's a horror anthology that takes place mostly on the open desert road. Uh, five interwoven stories deal with men on uh, with men on the run from the law um, and supernatural monsters, traveling musicians, a brother searching for his missing sister. Uh, maybe it's Clay from uh, Friday Remake. Uh, and a family on vacation. Viewers have compared it uh, to a Tales from the Crypt episode. Okay, that that alone intrigues me. I'll have, to, I'll have to remember that. Southbound. Okay. Here we go. Fan favorite here, The Strangers Pray at Night. All right, so if you're a fan of the original Strangers movie, you most likely will like this movie. You'll either like it better than The Strangers or um, you'll think it's kind of okay. Um, for me, I remember going to the theater and watching this. And it still to this day was my single biggest surprise in a good way horror movie that I've seen. Because I was expecting, you know, it's a fucking sequel, right? To a, to a movie that is a really good movie. Uh, but it's just, just a sequel that I knew nothing about. And it blew me out of the water just because I had zero expectations to super low expectations. The soundtrack in this movie is amazing. Uh, there's some great visuals. Um, it's really, really... Um, taking on a life of its own on Twitter and, you know, the internet and shit like that. It's like people praising the hell out of it for being the best thing since sliced bread. It's not that fucking good. It's really not. I don't even, I don't think it's better than The Strangers from 2009, I think that was. Um, or 2008, might be something like that. Either way, I don't think it's better than The Strangers at all. Um, but I think it's a fun-ass movie. Like I said, my expectations were towards the bottom, and it shot up, and I remember just smiling the whole time i was like this is good this is fun um so i would encourage you to check this out especially if you like the strangers i'd probably rather check this out than the new stranger stuff coming out um, but yeah definitely check out the strangers pray at night all right we got alone from 2020 we're all alone in 2020 uh jessica is a single woman traveling alone trying to deal with her husband's recent death by suicide on the road, she uh, keeps encountering a strange man whose attention she rebuffs. Uh, and then she's in a car accident. Uh, the man abducts her and holds her hostage. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it sounds intriguing enough. Depends on, you know, the performances and stuff like that. Sounds like a Lifetime movie, too. All right. We're getting to the end here. No Exit from 2022. It looks snowy. Um, Darby runs away from rehab uh, to drive to Salt Lake City to Salt Lake City um, and sees her mother I'm just kidding if you're from Salt Lake City guys uh, uh, to see her mother that's why uh, who is on her deathbed okay well, I stand to be corrected her mother's on her deathbed that's why she's going there uh, while en route she is warned that a massive winter storm is imminent and she must take cover at a nearby rest stop inside she meets two men and a married couple who are also waiting outside she finds a kidnapped girl in a van who says her kidnapper is inside the building that sounds intriguing this is one that could be really, really good or really, really bad. Uh, and it all depends on the direction and performances and stuff like that. But it's one I'll certainly uh, put on the list to give a try because that concept intrigues me a little bit. Bones and All from 2022 as well. Romantic horror road film about a young cannibal, Marine, 
who was abandoned by her father. On the road, she meets another cannibal, a young cannibal. She meets another cannibal. And they fall in love as they cross the country and attempt to figure out what a life together could look like. Was somebody really fucked up when they wrote this? That sounds so fucking weird. Two cannibals in love, and we're following them. They're the protagonist, right? Yeah, hard pass for me. Sounds ridiculously stupid. But also kind of kind of unique, right? And that's it. All right, so 45 road trip horror movies I just went through. I told you guys, there's a bunch of them. There's way more than I thought. And it seems like most of them involve cannibals, serial killers, break, cars breaking down, um, and then you just weave them into a movie, throw some characters, and wackiness ensues. Um, like I said, I'm a sucker for road trip horror movies. I, I, I think it's a fun concept. Um, and like I said, there's all those tropes and things like that. There's a few on this list that uh, I haven't seen that I'm definitely going to try to watch this summer. Uh, tell me in the comments what movies you have not seen that you're going to try to watch this summer uh, that were on this list. And thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.